So first off, there's a number of things impacting the different strategies that the mobile network operators are, are taking in terms of this. Uh, there's a number of different variables as well. One of them is the access points itself. And the first ones are already coming out on the market as we speak. They are what's called um, pass points certified by the Wi-Fi allowance, which means that all new access points being deployed should be pass points certified. And I think all, most all new networks that are being deployed are using this. It will of course take some time to actually uh, change out the existing access points, uh, but some of the vendors may be able to do that with software. Another aspect is the devices itself, and that's coming a little bit later than the access points, but we're now seeing that, for instance, Apple is releasing an iOS 7 support for this, and there's also devices such as Samsung and LG coming out onto the market. A key aspect to remember, though, is that the key necessity of seamless login and seamlessness and strong encryption and security features uh, actually is not requiring hotspot 2.0. You can do that with SIM authentication already before you have hotspot 2.0 capabilities. Another key aspect is the fact that uh, Wi-Fi only devices such as laptop and tablets are becoming more and more prevalent on the market and therefore more important. And thanks to hotspot 2.0 there are also ways to employ the same level of seamlessness and the same level of security using these devices. Um, finally, uh, we think that the key, uh, key uh, strategy for the mobile network operators is the, ro the actual roaming and settlement. Uh, Hotspot 2.0 will facilitate roaming and we believe that there will be a number of specialized companies doing roaming settlement and, and different partnerships but not only between operators. You can also imagine this will be between many different larger venue owners that can do brokerage towards the mobile network operators so that they can get access to a lot of these different networks. So yes, the Hotspot 2.0 is in place as a standard, though in terms of real commercial deployments using all the assets of the standard uh, has not really been deployed that many locations yet. Uh, but what we are seeing is that uh, <clears throat> one of the key cornerstones of Hotspot 2.0 is the seamless login, the, the fact that users do not have to interact to be automatically logged into Wi-Fi. And specifically so in terms of smartphones and tablets that have a SIM card, it's also using the credentials of the SIM card. This has been in real commercial deployments for a number of years, and we have seen this in about 15, 20 different deployments, and the response has been fantastic in many of these, um, in many of these different networks. We see that the take rate from the number of devices that can do SIM authentication is extremely high. We have seen mobile operators with as high as 90, 95% of all their devices that can do SIM authentication actually do authenticate automatically into the Wi-Fi networks. This has also, of course, meant that the actual usage and the, and the amount of data transported in the Wi-Fi network has been very, very high and it's in a, a very steep increase curve. see a number of different factors pushing their enthusiasm. I think one of the most important one is a broader device support in general. There are more and more devices that are going to support this, specifically the SIM authentication that I mentioned previously. Um, another aspect is the fact that there is a big installed base uh, either of smartphones that do not support SIM authentication or this great increasing trend of tablets and smartphones 
that may or may not support SIM authentication. If they don't, and some of these devices, such as the tablets and laptops that don't even have a SIM card, there are different ways now, thanks to Hotspot 2.0 and thanks to a couple of different authentication methods to actually secure and make that as seamless as SIM authentication. This means that mobile operators can actually uh, take advantage of all these devices and connect those with their subscribers that are the smartphones with the SIM authentications and the SIM cards in it. Monetization is also a very key thing. Um, we think that um, if you have installed a sufficient number of access points and been able to get a good Wi-Fi coverage out there, then suddenly you are able to actually monetize this in a good way. This means that you're able to bring up the ARPUs for a certain kind of subscribers or are able to bundle this with different kind of services to actually bring some more money to it. We can also see some mobile operators that are, have a very, very large amount of spectrum for LTE. Um, they see a, a lack of LTE capable devices. And what you can do with this is actually do a Wi-Fi unloading. You can create Wi-Fi hotspots and it's using LTE as a backhaul. For instance, in public transportation, in buses, in trains and many other areas. And thereby you can create a lot of different Wi-Fi hotspots, make use of all these different devices that can make use of the new secure authentication methods and therefore get a larger base to monetize on. Well, we can see from our pipeline that 2014 will be a very, very important year for 3GPP Wi-Fi access. This is the year where it really will take off. Um, in terms of real deployments, uh, again, the amount that have the full-fledged of 3GPP Wi-Fi access is rather few. But one of the, the interesting aspects of the 3GPP Wi-Fi access is that not only does it make use of the seamless and automated ways to actually log in, but you, there's also very good and standardized ways to actually bring all of the user plane, the data traffic, back into the mobile core. A lot of mobile operators are interested in this because it means that they can streamline services completely for how the users see a service when they use a smartphone in the 3D network or in Wi-Fi. It also means that the traffic is being concentrated so that they can sell maybe sponsored content and other things like that since uh, the data is hitting the internet from one and the same entry point. Um, it, since since there are a lot of devices, as, you, as the question is posed here, uh, that do not support SIM authentication, there are some intelligent and very innovative ways where we have been looking at this and, and coming up with ways for actually make it work for mobile network operators. This in, in, in entails a way to take the tablets and laptops and, and actually connect these uh, and bind it to the subscription that the smartphone has and make the secure authentication in the Wi-Fi network, but then through some smarts that we have, go back into the mobile network operator's backend system, find out the right parameters, and then actually make it look to the mobile network uh, as if these devices actually have a SIM card. It means that the traffic and tunnels can then be set up and go into the packet core as if this device actually had a SIM card. It then means that a user can have two, three different devices and all the different uh, data traffic will go into the mobile core in one coherent way. Over the top and a number of different applications are key for the operator to actually be able to get some more revenue streams. Um, and, and the fact that Wi-Fi and Hotspot 2.0 is making the actual transition from 3G into Wi-Fi completely automatic 
is, is, is a key underlying factor for why you can, you can do this in a good way. And uh, with the addition of 3DPP Wi-Fi access, if you now also can bring all the data traffic back into the mobile core, and you can actually process these over-the-top applications in one and exactly the same way, it does not matter if it's a voice, if it's a video, or if it's any other kind of media streaming, bringing the data traffic back is key because you can process all of these things, paying for it, billing for it, charging for it exactly in the same way. As an extension we see coming, and probably not too far out in the future, uh, we also see that quality of service control will be just as important into the Wi-Fi networks in, 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 in itself. There are standards coming out now, and thanks to solutions such as what Aptilo has, we can actually bridge the quality of service requirements and the service profiles between the mobile network operator and the Wi-Fi network. This would mean that cable operators and mobile operators that want to make use of the OTT video solutions can actually ensure a quality, a very good quality also in Wi-Fi. Well, to begin with, we will continue to uh, evolve in the direction and the trajectory that we have right now to provide essentially a critical glue between the Wi-Fi networks and either the mo in terms of mobile operators, their mobile core, and in terms of fixed and cable operators, their cable and fixed core. We think that the seamless integration going on forward in heterogeneous networks is going to be an even more important aspect. Um, once you have Wi-Fi networks uh, at an abundance, that also means that there will be a lot of different Wi-Fi network owners, and that means that the roaming is going to be very crucial. So the offloading solution vendors will continue to make a lot of dynamically policy-based roaming decisions and facilitate that partly thanks to Hotspot 2.0. Um, there's also a lot of people that may think that uh, everything will be completely uh, seamless in terms of the user aspect, never seeing a difference when they go into a Wi-Fi network. But even though the actual login is seamless, uh, when it comes to actually deploying Wi-Fi networks, many of these operators have to have a, an interesting menu, an interesting palatable offering and value proposition to the venue owners. And in terms of many venue owners, they actually want to present to the users that they actually now are in a Wi-Fi network provided by this hotel or this stadium or this a uh, coffee shop or this a retail location uh, or this enterprise. This means that if you, for instance, are at the stadium and there are additional video content available for you, you have to convey that to the user. So the different B2B services and the different portal interactions with the users is going to be just as important in the future, if not even more important, uh, once you've come across the hurdle of actually logging people in automatically.